Hi everyone. Welcome to the IC7100 from A to Z, video number 12. This time we're going to look at connecting the 7100 to a PC using the USB interface. If you want to operate any of the digital modes, program, save and recall memories with a PC, or use the DSTAR data capabilities, you're going to need to connect the 7100 to a PC. There are several ways to do this, but the USB connection is the easiest to set up, and it covers the most functions, so we're going to start there. Let's take a look. The IC7100 has a USB Type-B mini connector on the back. This is a little bigger than a micro USB connector, and not quite as big as a standard Type-B connector. It's probably the least commonly used connector type, so you need to make sure that you get the correct cable. In addition to having the right connector, there's one more feature of your USB cable that's very important when working with a radio. You need to have a good quality shielded cable with a ferrite filter at least at the radio end and preferably at both ends. I covered this and demonstrated why it's important in the IC7300 from A to Z series number 23. I'd encourage you to check out that video as well. The URL is at the bottom of the screen, and you'll find a link to it in the description for this video. I've also included links to some cables that I've used with good results. These are affiliate links, so it does help me out a little if you buy through those links. The entire setup is pretty simple, but plugging the cable in is probably the easiest part. The Mini B connector is keyed, so you can't plug it in the wrong way. For the PC end, I'll be covering this for Windows 10, if you're using a Mac or running Linux, your connections and settings will be a little bit different. ICOM makes a set of USB drivers that support the IC7100 and their other USB-equipped radios. These drivers are designed for Windows XP and newer, up through Windows 10. I've also provided links to those drivers and the driver installation guide in the description. I've connected the 7100 and other ICOM radios to my PC, both without and with the ICOM drivers installed, and I haven't noticed any difference. This is specifically with Windows 10, so I can't really say if that would be the same experience with earlier versions of Windows. I do know that the radios work fine with digital mode and remote software on Macs and Linux computers, and there are no special ICOM drivers for those machines, so I really don't think the drivers are needed, but I've provided the information just in case you have trouble. In any case, let's take a look at how you can tell if the radio is connected correctly to your radio. So, let's have a look at how you can tell if your radio has connected properly to the computer. In Windows 10, we are going to go down to the bottom of the screen here, and we are going to type in the little search box, Device Manager, or at least start typing it. And then here we get the Device Manager popping up. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And in Device Manager, we can see if our radio is connected. Now, at the moment, my IC7100 is not connected. I don't have the USB cable plugged in. So the two devices that we're going to look for is a serial port, and that's going to show up down here between other devices and print queues. And then the other thing we're going to look for up here is audio inputs and outputs. So let's look for the serial ports first. And right now, I don't even have the ports option shown. That's because I don't have any other devices. Depending on what your setup is like, you may have ports here if you have some other device connected to your computer that's got a serial port on it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the radio to the USB port. And you heard a couple of the rings there. And now you'll see the screen changed. And here we go, we have ports, COM, and LPT. So if I expand that, we see there's two serial ports here. The IC7100 actually has two serial ports. And mine showed up as COM3 and COM5. 
Now, again, in your setup, these may show up as different numbers depending on what other ports you've used or if you have something currently connected. So the number doesn't matter too much, but you will need to make note of what it is for your radio when we're setting up digital software. Now, the other part that connects when you plug in the radio is the audio input and output. So up at the top here, I'm going to click on the arrow to expand that, and I have a bunch of stuff connected with audio. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, one of them is my microphone, which is this ATR USB microphone that I'm using right now. But the other device that we're looking for is a USB audio codec. And if you look here, I don't have anything other than this one here on microphone and this one down here on speakers. So this is the IC7100. It says USB audio codec and speakers USB audio codec. So that's what we're looking for. And in fact, I'll unplug the radio again here. And it takes it a second for the USB to figure things out. Now, if we look here, you'll see those USB audio codec devices are gone. So let me plug this back in. So I know that my radio is connecting to the computer and Windows is recognizing it because I've got the audio devices and I've got these serial ports. Now, one other thing before we jump out of Device Manager, we're going to look at a setting on the serial ports. And that is uh, on here. If we double click on this, it brings up the properties screen for the ports. And for port settings, you've got various baud rate selections you can make here. The default is 9600. And I'll show you on the 7100 setup screen on the radio, this is actually set to audio. So, uh, excuse me, to auto. And with it set to auto, it'll automatically change the speed to whatever the program is trying to use. So you don't really need to worry too much about what these settings are. But another one that's important over here is power management. And you notice on this power management tab, it says allow the computer to turn off this device to save power. And that box is checked. If you're using your IC7100 and you're going to be using it portable somewhere and you're using it with a laptop, if your laptop is running on battery power and you haven't done anything with the radio for a while, it may choose to turn this port off. So I always uncheck these when I'm doing the setup because I want to make sure that if I'm doing any kind of remote operation or, for example, if you're going to run like whisper mode on the WSJTX-X software, and you're going to leave it run overnight, I don't want anything to happen where it's going to turn off um, those serial ports, and then all of a sudden I can't control the radio, or if I have something that's, you know, listening all night long, and I'm trying to capture something, I don't want it turning those off. So I always go in and turn off that setting to allow the computer to turn them off. There is no, um, there is no equivalent setting for the audio devices. They don't get turned off, or at least there's no automatic way that Windows can turn them off. So that's it. This is how you can tell if your devices are connecting. So if the 7100 is plugged in and you hear the little uh, chime tones from Windows saying that something's connected and then you can't find these devices in here, then it's time to start doing some troubleshooting. So that's how you know you're connected in Windows. Let's take a look at the USB settings on the radio. Pretty much these will all stay in their default uh, settings, but you should at least be aware of where they are. So we're going to press set to get to the settings menu. 
and then we're gonna go down this is I'll start at the top here it's down on the third page of the menu you want to go to connectors and we're going to select connectors and let's go all the way to the top of that one there's a number of options here for setting audio levels and some of the audio output selections and input and then there's also um, modulation levels and where modulation is coming from for data on and off we're gonna go through those in another video I want to get down here to the serial port setting so first there's the CIV which is computer interface 5 is what that stands for with ICOM so we're gonna go to the CIV settings and again you can pretty much leave these in their defaults baud rate auto so the radio will just detect the baud rate that's coming into it the CIV address 88 is the default setting for a 7100 ICOM has a different address for every one of their radio models and if you're using the the separate remote inject not the USB connection on the back you can actually connect multiple radios through a single interface and then they use this address to have your remote software be able to identify which radio it's talking to. Uh, CIV transceive, we're going to leave that on. This also doesn't really matter much unless you have a couple radios connected together. And what this will do is you can connect multiple ICOM radios together uh, using the the remote jacks on the back and if you change the frequency on one radio it'll actually change the frequency on the other radio in sync with it and then antenna output this is if you're connecting to an antenna controller uh, an automatic antenna switch that might switch to a different antenna depe depending on what band you're on so again we're going to leave that in the default and then the other item here, and let me just make sure there's nothing else on the main menu. Yeah, this is for uh, data modes, so the D star data modes. We're not going to touch those today. USB 2 slash data 1 function, this is for that second serial port. Right now, I have it set to off. And I'm going to leave it off for now, but you can set it up for RIDI decode. There is an RTTY decoder built into the 7100. And if you set that to on, then uh, it will send the RIDI data out that serial port like a serial terminal. And the other option is DV data, digital voice data. This is if you want to use that second serial port as an input for sending data over DSTAR. And there's some other functions you can do um, with a GPS with that serial port where you can have it send GPS data out. Again, we're going to cover all of that in a separate video when we start going through the D-Star and digital voice stuff. And same thing here with the baud rate. If you're using that second serial port, this determines the baud rate that the data send out of it or is it or it's expecting coming into it. So again, that's just a quick review of the items that are available for the serial ports. The standard settings that are defaulted in the radio should be fine. Let's take a look at how it'll work with some of the software. All right, we're using WSJTX as a test here just to make sure that we are communicating with the radio correctly. And I'll go into the settings menu here on this one. We'll cover the settings in a little more detail in another video, but I'm just going to quickly check. If I click the radio tab, I've got it set to IC7100, and then serial port. If you remember in Device Manager, when I plugged the radio in, we showed COM3 and COM5, and I've got this set to COM3, which is the CIV port. And the data bits is 8, stop bits is 1, uh, handshake you don't need to worry about so this is basically set to the same as the baud rate settings for the port and you'll notice the baud rate is 19,200 and the radio is set to auto 
and on the device manager screen we were at 9600 but this software is going to change it when it runs so this setting is fine and it works a little faster that way so I'm going to click OK and we can tell that the radio is talking because if I go over here to the radio and I change my frequency we can see it changing here on WSJT and let me go actually if I pick the preset frequencies so I'm gonna click the 80 meter frequency and you can see that it set the radio to the correct frequency now there's not much coming in here it's daytime right now so 80 meters is pretty dead so let's go to a different uh, band we'll try 20 meters which should be pretty active this time of day and now all of a sudden you'll see the audio coming in here and I'm gonna turn the volume up on the radio I don't have it so you can hear the audio directly through the computer but what I'm doing here is a very important test that I always do when I'm connecting a radio up to my PC and that is I've got the volume control on the radio turned all the way down right now and we can see that we're getting good audio signals here in the software and it's decoding fine I'm gonna turn it up and now you can hear the radio through the speaker and hear the uh, uh, FT8 stuff coming over let me just turn that back down and the reason I turn the volume off on the speaker of the radio is that WSJT and many of the other digital mode software packages they're actually good enough that the microphone on your laptop will pick up enough audio and it'll um, actually start decoding and it looks like it's working but it doesn't work very well so very quickly here I'll show you in the settings on WSJT if we go to the audio tab and here it says microphone is USB audio codec which was again in device manager that's the audio device for the radio and speakers is USB audio codec and I'll just show you a quick example here if I just set this to my microphone uh, actually we'll set it to the microphone on the laptop so that's this Realtek microphone array that's the built-in laptop microphone I'm gonna say OK and you'll notice now it kinda of, it, we're getting some noise and as the screen is scrolling down here you see that we don't see the good quality signals now let me turn up the radio and we'll just watch and listen for a minute here So, as you can see, it's actually trying to decode the audio from the microphone on the laptop. So let me go set this back the way it's supposed to be. So if you have stuff that looks like it's kind of working decoding stuff, but not very well, that's one of the things that you're going to want to check, is to make sure that you have your audio settings in whatever digital software you're using set correctly. So we've got the radio connected. We know that we're controlling it over the serial port. That seems to be working. And we know we're getting audio into the radio. And in another video, we'll take a look at how to set your input and audio and input and output audio settings. That's all we're going to cover this time. In upcoming videos, we'll take a look at setting the audio levels for digital mode software and we'll look at some other easier ways to set up and program memories from a PC when you've got the radio connected. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would appreciate a click on that like button. If you're enjoying the channel, please consider clicking on the subscribe button. You can also click on the little bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. You can check out the companion website for this channel at a to z.tech 
You'll find a link to the website in the description along with links that were mentioned during the video. I'm always happy to see your comments if you have any questions, corrections, or other thoughts. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.